larger problem leading to difficulties of diagnosis is that so many different things can happen with EDS and they can resemble other more common conditions. And if you're a specialist in one condition, you're going to tend to focus on what you specialize in and focus on some set of symptoms and maybe underappreciate other symptoms. So this brings us to a different animal. So instead of the zebra, the elephant. And this is from an old parable talking about several blind men who were trying to determine what an elephant was like and it was just based on touching it. So based on what part of the elephant they happened to touch, they decided this is what an elephant was. So a man touching the tusk would think an elephant was like a spear. Another blind man who felt the trunk thought it was like a snake. A blind man who felt one of the legs determined that elephants were like a tree. If someone touched the ear, they decided it was like a fan. Touching the bulk of the elephant itself, they decided an elephant was like a wall. And the man who felt the tail decided an elephant was like a rope. So if we substitute these literal structures of the elephant and talk about some of the features of EDS, you could see that, again, based on the symptoms that someone focuses on or what their specialty is, they may decide the patient has one thing and not see the larger picture. So a primary care doctor or a rheumatologist may decide that the person has fibromyalgia based on joint pain, based on other pain. Uh, a neurologist may decide that migraines is the main problem. A primary care doctor or a psychologist or a psychiatrist may decide that anxiety is the major picture. Uh, again, a rheumatologist may focus on the joint issues and diagnose arthritis. A cardiologist may focus on cardiac issues. So patients can have POTS or they can have rapid heart rate and get diagnosed with something called IST or uh, idiopathic sinus tachycardia. And a gastroenterologist would maybe give a diagnosis of irritable bowel syndrome. So as you can see, EDS has many faces. And I just want to further bring this home by giving you some other examples of some different ways that different patients can present. So for instance, a doctor may say Mary, who's a 40-year-old woman, she's coming in reporting that she's being bothered by joint pain, some lightheadedness, she often gets stomach bloating, and she feels fatigue and describes brain fog where it's hard to concentrate or hard to focus. In contrast, there's Sarah, who's a 16-year-old girl. She was doing great, then had an episode of mononucleosis, and ever since then, she's been having problems with fainting and quite significant nausea and vomiting. She's always been double-jointed, but it doesn't pose any problems for her. Then there's Robert, a 50-year-old man. For the last several years, he's been bothered by migraines, problems with TMJ, or temporomandibular joint dysfunction, so his jaw clicks and... He gets soreness in the jaw when he eats things that are chewy. He does not have any lightheadedness, but notes that often he feels palpitations, feels that his heart is beating harder or there's extra heartbeats. And uh, in fact, he's been diagnosed with uh, mitral valve regurgitation, so some leakage due to stretchiness of his, uh, some of his heart valves. And lastly, there's Carol, a 20-year-old woman she has very severe allergies. She reacts to a lot of things. She gets rashes from this. She has asthma and she gets hives. And those are really the only symptoms that are bothering her.